imagine that you had two molecules, A and B. And we'll say that B has a higher standard reduction potential or higher reduction potential. Basically, it wants electrons more than A. Remember, oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. So reduction, gain, RB wants to gain electrons, so it will take electrons from A. And well, when this happens, we get energy. We have that potential of energy coming from the difference between the potentials of A and B. And we can actually calculate out what our delta G would be, how much energy we would get. We get the same amount of energy if we pass directly from A to B as if we pass from A to an intermediate to B. So it would be the same difference from where my hands were to where the floor was, even if I dropped them to the table first. If the table was higher, it would get a little bit of energy and then a lot of energy as it fell off the table. But if the table was lower, well here it would get more energy when it dropped down to the table and less energy when it fell off the table. We can basically do the same sort of thing with our biochemistry. We can pass electrons from something that wants them um, not as much to something that wants them more to something that wants them even more. And depending on how in between that in between thing is, how much it wants it, we can split up the energy that we'll get in different ways. In the electron transport chain, we pass electrons from something with a lower standard reduction potential to a higher, to a higher, to a higher, to a higher, ultimately to oxygen. Some of those pass-offs have a big energy change. We can use that big energy release to pump protons, which we can then use to make ATP, the gradient from it. Some of them don't have as much of a change. If they don't have as much of a change, well here, we're not gonna have enough energy to pump protons, and so we won't pump the protons, but we still pass the electrons, and that's still energetically favorable. How much energy you get depends on the difference between what's being passed, um, the thing that the electrons are being passed between, more specifically on their reduction potentials. Two of the common um, kind of electron carriers that we see in biochemistry are our NAD plus um, or our NADP plus and our FAD or FMN. There's various other flavins. What these have in common is that they can, they have kind of one of those intermediate wants of electrons where they can take electrons from something with a lower standard reduction potential, but then give them to something with a higher standard reduction potential. If we compare FADH or FADH2 um, or FAD um, versus NAD plus or NADH or NADP plus or NADH, well, it turns out that with FAD and with FMN and other flavins, the exact reduction potential is going to depend on the protein it's embedded in. Whereas NADH this is kind of like a free floating thing, so it's less dependent. But most of the time, our FADH2 is going to have a higher reduction potential. If a higher reduction potential, that means that our table is lower to the floor. So when the balls roll off of that table, we don't get as much. But we got more when we dropped it onto the table. So basically what happens with this is we split it up. So we get a big pass off and then we get a smaller pass off. Whereas with NADH, um, here what's happening is that we have a smaller pass off to NADH, which allows us to then have a bigger pass off from NADH. So the reason why we might use one versus the other depends in large part on the how amount of energy we need for that first step, for that first pass off. But if we use FAD, well here we have less left over. And so this is why in complex two of our electron transport chain, we don't have enough energy to pump protons. So we pump protons if we go directly from NADH to Q, but not if we go from FADH2 to Q. Ultimately, this is why we get more ATP made per NADH than per FADH2, but they're both going to do the same thing, pass electrons to Q. And from there, they can go through the rest of the electron transport chain. Similar principles hold in mind no matter what sorts of chains you're talking about. The bigger the gap between them in terms of their reduction potentials, the more energy you're going to get over um, in that pass off. But you can pass... The overall, you would have the same amount of energy difference if you were starting from these 
from from A and from B. Um, you can just split things up in different ways.